right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Scott Manning coming to you live for this college football wrap-up report. I first have to make it an apology. I said last Thursday night, I said, oh, this is going to be a boring weekend in college football. And I figured it would live up to it. Well, was I dead wrong. We had a bunch of upsets yesterday. Kentucky, Florida barely squeaked by Kentucky. I mean, Maryland went down. Michigan State went down. USC went down. But I'm going to be totally honest with you. I was totally wrong about this weekend in college football. I figured it'd be a boring weekend. Wrong. I got five games I want to talk about from this past weekend. So we're going to be here for the next little bit. And I'm going to hand out my game balls, give you my game of the day pick. It's voted off by the fans at College Football Universe on Facebook. And we're going to go ahead and have a great show. Let's go ahead and get right into it. We started out right with, with number 21, Maryland, losing, losing to Temple 20-17 to on Saturday. And i got to give Temple credit. Two goal line stands in that game, and they got the job done. For Temple, Anthony Russo, 20-37, 277 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. Jordan Blue, five catches. He had eight catches, 132 yards, and a touchdown. Isaiah Wright, five receptions, 58 yards, and he had a touchdown in the game himself. And I got to give kudos to the to the Temple defense. Ten tackles for loss, four sacks, two goal line stands, and they got the job done. Despite the fact that Maryland turned the ball over three times, they did it. Maryland, one for six on fourth down in the game. And Maryland was only 5 of 21 on third down. But Temple wasn't much better either on third down. They were only 3 of 14. The defensive coaches for both teams really earned their pay on Saturday. And Temple only had 21 first downs all game. And, they, and Temple gets the upset. Now, Maryland is now out of the top 25 because of it. But let's think about this. Mer Temple coach Rod, Car Rod Carey said after the game, we got the job done, we got the win. I'm off to a great start my first year here at my first season here at Temple. I hope we can take the Temple out somewhere special. I think we have a great team that can get the job done. And that's all there is to it, my friends. We did it. This is the second straight year that Temple has knocked off an undefeated Maryland team. And they did it, and they did it, and they did it. Will Temple win another game? We don't know. But head coach Rod Carey in his first season at Temple is off to a fantastic start. All right. The next game that needs to be talked about. Number 13, Penn State versus Pitt. This is the, this is the 100th meeting. This series is going on hiatus for a while. I don't know the whole story, but they're... But the series is going on a hiatus, and this is going to be the last game for a while until they meet again. I don't know what's going on with that, and I honestly don't. But anyway, Penn State beat Pitt 13 to 10. Sean Clifford 14 to 30, 222 yards for Penn State. Journey Brown had 10 carries for 109 yards in the ball game. The Penn State defense did a fantastic job. They held Pitt to 24 rushing yards total as a team on 25 attempts. And they had the ball for over, and Penn State had the ball for over 34 minutes, and they got the job done. But what can you say? Now Pitt, now the Pitt Panthers had a chance to win the game, on to win the game on the Penn State one yard line. On three plays, they they had no gain. Pitt went for a nine, and the logic thinking on fourth down from the one, you go for it, right? Head coach Pitt coach Pat Narduzzi, Pat Narduzzi was asked, why did you go for a field goal? He said, we needed two scores to win. But anyway. Three attempts, they didn't get the yard to get into the end zone. On fourth down, the logic's thinking, go for it and tie the game. But Pitt decided to opt to go for a 19-yard chip shot. They missed. Pat Narduzzi at Pitt has got to be the dumbest play, got to be the dumbest coach on the face of God's green earth at the moment. I know he said we needed two scores, but the bottom line is this. Pitt did not play good in this game. Penn State played good enough to win. Now, I understand that this is a rivalry, the 100th meeting, and I know it's going to be going away for a while. But I will say this, though. The Pitt Panthers are, are a great, are a great team. The Pitt Panthers had a chance to win it, but they blew it. Penn State, they're well on their way. And they're still undefeated so far as they go into Big Ten play here in the very, here in the very near future. And here's the thing. Third down, Pitt was only 5-16 for, on third down, Penn State was only 4-13. And Penn State got the job done. Despite the fact Penn had more first downs than Penn State 20 to 17. 
Penn State still won it. And that's all there was to it. I've never seen a game this crazy in all my life. And if you thought the first two games were crazy, the next two I'm going to talk about are just going to be as, is just as wild. Arizona State versus number 18 Michigan State. This game was a grinded out grudge match right from the start. Arizona State took the victory 10-7. For Arizona State, Jaden Daniels, 15 to 26, 140 yards. Eno Benjamin, 11 carries, 38 yards, and a touchdown. But for Michigan State, Brian Lewicki, 24, 38, 291 yards, 10 carries, 25 yards. Elijah Collins, 19 carries for 72 yards and a touchdown in the game. The only score for Michigan State. Arizona State won despite only having 216 yards of total offense. That's all they had in the game, and they got the job done. Michigan State dominated, dom just dominated about everything. But they got out playing in the end. Or actually, let me take that back. Arizona State, Eno Benjamin had to, had to carry into the end zone for the touchdown to give him the 10-7 lead. Michigan State had a chance to tie the game to send this game into overtime. But what happened was, when they were driving down the field, they were aided with a, with a controversial pass interference call. And then, let me, see, let me look at my notes here. I want to make sure I'm spelling it right. Matt Coughlin had a chance to win this game or to send the game into overtime with a 42-yard field goal at the end. The kick was on its way. It was up, and it was good. Hold it, but hold everything. Michigan State had 12 men on the field. Back them up five yards. It would have been a 47 yarder to tie the game. Coughlin choked and missed it big time. He was 0 for 3 from the field goal department all game. Arizona gets the win 10 7. Arizona State won despite only 216 yards total offense. And Arizona State had four tackles for loss and one sack on the day. Michigan State's defense played fantastic. Seven tackles for loss, four sacks in the game themselves. But the bottom line is this. Arizona State got the job done. Michigan State has no offense. And that's all there is to it. They always say, what do you, there was an old saying that defense wins championships in college football. But the deal is, you got to be able to score too. And I think that's what a lot of these coaches are forgetting, in my honest opinion. Okay, let's move on to the next one. While the Arizona State-Michigan State game was going on, we were watching USC, USC number 24 USC, blow it against BYU 30-27 to in overtime. USC, Clay Helton is in trouble. Clay Helton's, and I'll get to Clay Helton here in a minute. But first, for BYU, Zach Wilson, 20-33, 280 yards and a touchdown. He also had a touchdown rushing. Tyron Tyson Williams, 19 carries, 99 yards. Dax Milline, two catches, 36 yards, and a touchdown in the game. For USC, Keldon Davis, 24-34, 281 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. I'll get to that in a second. Bobby Malapia, 23 carries, 96 yards, he had a touchdown on the ground. Michael Pittman, Jr., nine catches, 95 yards, two touchdowns in the game. This is what killed him. USC, those three interceptions by Kelton Davis, those were the only three turnovers in the game. BYU had none. BYU's defense had five tackles for loss, two sacks. USC had seven tackles for loss and three sacks in the game. Now, what in the heck did happen? Chase Bogart hit a 52-yard field goal with a minute 43 left to tie the game. Jake Oldroy had a 43-yarder to win it, and all of a sudden... And then all of a sudden, USC threw an interception in overtime at the end of the day to give you to give BYU a, a 30 to 27 victory in overtime over number 24 USC. Now, here is the $64,000 question: What's next? Clay Helton's job, his seat has just gotten hotter after losing to BYU. With a new athletic director coming in after Lynn Swan stepped down, what will happen to USC? That remains to be seen. But the bottom line is, the Trojans are going into the hardest, into the toughest part of their schedule. And you lose a non-conference game like this to BYU, it doesn't look good. It's not going to look good for you. 
And that's all there is to it, my friends. And I'm going to be totally honest with you. Clay Helton, now I'm going to take in an opinion poll question on College Football Universe probably later tonight or sometime tomorrow. Who will be the first coach to lose his job? Chip Kelly or Chip Kelly, Clay Helton, or Jim Harbaugh? I will ask that question probably on my college on college football universe on Facebook. And I'm going to be honest with you. Clay Helton's really on the hot seat after giving this one away. After the way that BYU, after the way that USC threw it away late in the go. All right. The last game I want to talk about. Oh, and this was this one had you know this song Singing in the Rain? They were singing in the rain and thunder in Ames, Iowa. Number 19, Iowa versus Iowa State. This game had everything from craziness to weather delays to thunderstorms in Ames. It was just unbelievable. Nate Stanley, however, Iowa got the job done in 1817. Nate Stanley, 22 of 35, 201 yards. He had seven carries, 11 yards, and one rushing touchdown on the ground. Mikel, Mikel Sargent, 13 carries, 58 yards. Brandon Smith, four receptions for 51 yards in the game. Iowa State, Brock Rudy, 24-34, 276 yards and a touchdown. He also had nine carries for 34 yards in the game. Deshante Jones, he even threw a touchdown pass. He, he threw a 51-yard bomb in the game. Tyreek Milton, eight receptions, 144 yards and a touchdown. Well, Michael Pedway, eight receptions, 83 yards and a touchdown himself. So what in the world happened? How in the world did Iowa escape over Iowa State? I have the answer. In the Iowa-Iowa State game, which featured so many weather delays, and it was just unbelievable. They had three hours of rain, three hours of weather delays. Dontron Young was so excited to get the ball downfield, but here, but he goofed up when he collided with Deshante Jones, who was feeling the ball. And I'll tell you right now, it was a collision worth remembering. Iowa got the ball back, they ran out the clock, and they got an 18-17 victory. Iowa had the ball for over 34 minutes, and they got the job done, despite the fact that Iowa State had a 419 yards total offense to Iowa's 313. On third down, Iowa State's coaching staff needs a lot of work. They gave a 10 of 19 on third down. Iowa State was 3 of 9 on third down. I always call that the big money down because that's where the coaches earn their pay. And Iowa State's defense, two ta three tackles for loss, two sacks. Iowa's had two tackles for loss and one sack in the game. This was incredible. Iowa going into Ames to beat Iowa State, and they're undefeated going into, going into Big Ten play. But the bottom line is this. Iowa beat Iowa State in the craziest way possible. And I'm going to say this now. I have never seen a game. So crazy and so wild, like I saw in Ames this past Saturday. All right. Now, it's time to hand out some game balls. We got some, oh, we, oh this is my favorite part of the show. The game balls. I'm going to be handing out game balls for every single game that I've talked about here. Started out with the Temple, Maryland contest. For Temple. Anthony Russo, 20-37, 277 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. Jackson Blue, five receptions for 132 yards and a touchdown. Congratulations to you two gentlemen. You two gentlemen are, are going to be proud recipients of a Scott Manning game ball. For the Penn State Pit Contest, this was a hard one. And I'm going to be honest, and I'm going to tell you why. There wasn't much offense in this game at all. But anyway... Sean Clifford, 14 of 30 for 222 yards. He didn't have a pit interception. Journey Brown, 10 carries, 109 yards. Congratulations to you two gentlemen. You two gentlemen are proud recipients of a Scott Manning game ball. For the Arizona State Michigan State contest. You got more. See if I can find some other information here. Do -do -do. All right, I can do. This. Now I'm. Yeah, I'm just going to, I'll just go with these guys here. I just had to overlook something real quick. For the Arizona State, Michigan State contest, Jaden Daniels, 18 to 26, 140 yards. Eno Benjamin, 11 carries, 38 yards in the game when he touched down. Congratulations to you two gentlemen. You two gentlemen are going to be the proud recipients of a Scott Manning game ball. 
for the BYU USC contest. One game ball. Zach Wilson, 20 of 33, 280 yards, a touchdown, and a rushing touchdown. Congratulations to you, sir. You are now the proud recipient of a Scott Manning game ball. For the Iowa Iowa State contest, the I the game ball goes to Nate Stanley, 22 of 35, 201 yards. He has seven carries and 11 for 11 yards and one touchdown rushing. Congratulations to you, sir. To you, Mr. Stanley. You are now the recipient of a Scott Manning game ball. And now, it is now time for my game of the day pick, voted by the fans of College Football Universe. There weren't very many votes because it was kind of late getting getting it going. But anyway, and now, it, now drum roll, please. Oh yeah, here are the nominees: number twenty-one Maryland versus Temple, Pitt versus number thirteen Penn State. Basically, it's just all five of the games that I've talked about. And now, the game of the day award goes to drum roll, please. It goes to the Iowa-Iowa State game. Singing in the thunderstorms, singing in the rain, and the three-hour delays. Iowa-Iowa State, congratulations to you. You guys are the proud recipients of the Scott Manning Game of the Day Award. And my congratulations to you on that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for my closing thoughts. This past weekend... Everybody was thinking, oh, we're going to be in for a boring weekend. We were so dead wrong, including myself. I said, I, I had a hard time picking games that I could cover, I could talk about. But here's the deal. I did find some games to talk about. Ohio State, Indiana, it was a blowout. Ohio State blew them away on the road. Ohio State has one more non-conference game coming up against Miami of Ohio. And Justin Fields, he looked fantastic. He will play again. Will Ohio State put 50 to 60 on the board against Miami of Ohio? That remains to be seen. But keep in mind on Saturday, we have two big main event games. Number 10, Michigan, faces number 14, Wisconsin. Michigan faces Wisconsin. And we got number 3, Georgia, facing number 7, Notre Dame, in Athens on Saturday. So we got two big main event games. That's going to have, that will have everybody talking. But the question is, then the Wisconsin-Michigan game. Coach Jim Harbaugh said, I don't know about the injury situation. I don't know what the deal is there. That is not what everybody in Ann Arbor wanted to hear. And if you think back a couple weeks ago, Michigan nearly got embarrassed against Army. Harbaugh is really on the hot seat. And everybody had a Michigan. A lot of people had Michigan winning the winning the Big Ten championship. If Michigan plays like they did against Army, Wisconsin's going to blow them right out of the ball. We're going to going to take them out, and it's going to be over in five minutes flat. Now, as far as the Georgia Notre Dame game, remember two years ago when when Georgia came to South Bend, and you got to remember it was totally different back then. They had a different quarterback. They had two different. They had a lot of different players. <clears throat> Georgia doesn't have Sonny Michelle and Nick Chubb anymore, but they still got to deal with Jake Fromm. And two years ago, Georgia came into South Bend and escaped over Notre Dame twenty to nineteen. What will happen on Saturday between the Georgia and the Georgia Notre Dame game? That remains to be seen. But the bottom line is this. Anything can happen on any given Saturday, and it usually does. And I'll say this now. Whoever gets the job done between Wisconsin and Michigan and Notre Dame, Georgia, will have earned their victories. A lot of people in the Notre Dame, Georgia game are thinking blowout. I wouldn't quite say that just yet. We'll, we'll see about that. And that's all there is to it on this night. And that's all there is to it. All right, folks, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. I want to thank you guys so much for being with me here tonight. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. This way I can start going back live again. I want to get 1,000 subscribers so I can go back to being a live show. And I want to thank you guys. You guys have a great night. Thank you so much for being with me. You guys are a great group, and you guys have a great night. Thank you so much for being with me, and God bless. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much, and good night. And thank you.